When did the class clown take it too far? Story 1. Junior year in high school in Algebra 2. The teacher was kind of a douche, so this one guy, let's call him Mike, would give him a hard time. This was a regular thing, and Mike would get kicked out of class for saying and doing some inappropriate stuff, but we all thought it was hilarious. One day, our teacher didn't show up to class. Word got around that his oldest son had perished of a substance overdose, and he had to take some personal time off. He didn't show back up until a week later, and he looked really sullen and down. During class, Mike pulled out a can of Coca-Cola and started sipping it nonchalantly. Teacher had a strict no eating or drinking in class policy, and Mike was aware of this. He told Mike to throw it away and step outside. Mike, the absolute freaking savage, says, Look, I know you don't like Coke, but I'm sure your son did. Nobody laughed. Just silence. Some people didn't get it. The ones who did were just too shocked to say anything, like me. Mike threw his drink away and walked out of the classroom, while the teacher just sort of haphazardly continued his lesson, although we could tell Mike's comment messed him up. I mean, we've all had a class clown in our lives, but Mike takes the cake with his savage sense of humor. Although, I have to say his comment about the teacher's son was way out of line. I understand that he was trying to be funny, but there's a time and place for everything. And that was definitely not it. Story 2. There was a class clown in my class and another one from the senior class at the time. They'd collaborated to throw toilet paper all over the schoolyard as a joke. I forgot exactly what it was, but there was some kind of very important event going on that day, and we were supposed to have a lot of visitors that afternoon. The principal was not amused. He said if they'd done it on any other day, he'd probably just let it go after making them clean it up. They got detention, and one of the teachers made them personally apologize to the elderly janitor who had to clean that stuff up in the dark when it was freezing cold. Oh boy, throwing toilet paper all over the schoolyard? That's some classic high school shenanigans right there. I can imagine the principal was not too thrilled, especially if there were important visitors coming that day. Detention and a personal apology to the janitor seem like fair punishments to me. Story 3. This one kid thought it would be funny to snort a line of that sour powder. This was no small line, mind you. I actually think he was rubbing it off the candy. Anyway, he does his line and instantly starts screaming. His nose was gushing blood and I honestly think he popped a blood vessel in his eye, ran out of the room, and later saw an ambulance come to the school. Don't do substances. Kid was always doing dumb stunts just to make people laugh. He got sick of climbing on slash in random things and jumping stairs one day, and decided it'd be funny to smack into walls. His first few walls were fine as they were all concrete. There was a girl crying in the hallway, and he figured he could make her laugh by making a funny face and tackling the glass door. He went through the door and needed stitches, leaving splatters of blood and broken glass on the way to the office. Okay, I'm just going to come out and say it. Snorting sour powder is not a smart idea. Like, at all. I'm not surprised this kid had a nosebleed and popped a blood vessel in his eye. I hope he learned his lesson and doesn't try anything like that again. And as for the kid who thought it would be funny to tackle a glass door, well, that's just asking for trouble. I hope he got the help he needed, both physically and mentally. Story 4. Ah! A wasp! He then proceeded to throw an entire freaking desk at it. The wasp. Perched on the window. Whoops! Did he get it? Legend says that the wasp is still on that window. Story 5. Straight up just peed on the floor in the middle of class and convinced the teacher it was spilled water, so he cleaned it up. Honestly, not even class clown stuff at that point. Just being a gross jerk. He didn't get in nearly enough trouble. We had this one kid in our class in high school. I don't want to call him weird, and I'm genuinely not sure if he had a disorder. But he spoke with a lisp and didn't seem to have many friends. Our interactions were few and, well, weird, for lack of a better word. I don't mean the offensive weird, just the objective not normal. The only vivid memory I have of him is being two seats away from him, him being asleep in class, and hearing a little sputtering noise and seeing his desk coated in water. Kid between us goes, did 
Did you just throw up on the desk? He responds with, No, it's just water. And then we just went about our day like nothing ever happened. Never wiped it up, never questioned it, just continued learning about whatever stuff I was learning in that class. Okay, that's just gross. I mean, who just pees on the floor in the middle of class? And then convinces the teacher it's just spilled water. Come on, dude, have some basic human decency. It's a shame that the kid didn't face more serious consequences for his actions. Story 6. Kid, class clown, in elementary school made fun of a boy no one liked. He was kind of a jerkwad. But one day, the boy said his mom had a miscarriage, and the other kid thought it would be a great insult later in the week to tell him something along the lines of, Your brother is better off unalive. It's a good thing your mom had a miscarriage. Don't think we've ever rallied for this jerkwad kid as hard as we did that day. Not cool. Story 7. When I was in third grade, we were all doing our thing, coloring, reading, etc. The class clown was being really noisy and kept goofing off. We were all having fun, and the class clown eventually sat down. It wasn't long before he was laying on the floor, foaming out of his mouth, shaking violently. We all laughed. It was a joke, right? Before long, the teacher came rushing over to see the new joke the kid came up with. She immediately called 911 and he was rushed out of the room. He had a seizure while the whole class thought he was joking. He recovered and everything was fine. I just feel bad for the kid. It's easy to see how everyone might have thought it was a joke at first, especially since the class clown had been acting up. But seizures are no laughing matter. And it's a good thing the teacher acted quickly to get help. I hope the kid is doing okay now. Story 8. I was at an all-state music festival, basically a concert band that students from the entire state auditioned to perform in during high school. And during some downtime between pieces during the rehearsal, the conductor asked if anyone wanted to come up and say a joke into the mic. One of the percussionists raises his hand, walks up, and tells the following joke. What do you call a kid with no friends? A Sandy Hook survivor. I absolutely could not believe what I heard. This was just weeks or maybe a few months after the shooting. I don't remember if anyone laughed. I don't think they did. But he definitely got a stern talking to. Story 19. In fourth grade, we had a kid who disrupted class all the time because he couldn't keep still. It had snowed and we were walking around the room doing an assignment. The teacher went to the class next door for a minute. The kid ran out the door to the field right outside the door made a snowball, and threw it in the classroom, hitting a huge light bulb which exploded, sending glass everywhere. Everyone screamed, teachers came running in, and we never saw that kid again. This was in the 70s, so they probably dosed him up and put him in a different school. It sounds like this kid had a lot of energy and didn't know how to channel it in a positive way. I'm not sure dosing him up was the best solution, though. Hopefully, he got the help he needed to learn how to manage his behavior and cope with whatever condition he had. Story 10. My sophomore year of high school. It was English class, and there were four clowns in the same class. Second semester of school. So it was shortly after I'd been switched from one teacher's class to the new one. During the first semester, there was a student a grade below us that had committed self-unaliving, and the year before that, my cousin had done the same. The teacher walked out of the classroom to take something to get printed or something and left the only senior in the class in charge. Both she and I were close to the deceased freshman's family and had struggled with his unaliving together. Not a minute after the teacher left, two of the clowns got up and went over to the windows, grabbed the pull strings to the blinds, and used it as a noose to hang themselves. Some kids laughed. Some kids told them to knock it off. A few just wanted to finish their worksheets. But I had to leave the classroom, and I passed the teacher in the hall. She saw I was crying and asked what happened. I was trying to explain while sobbing when the senior came out after chewing the clowns a new one and explained to the teacher what had happened. She actually escorted everyone except the clowns out of the classroom so she wouldn't disturb the other classes around us with how much and how loudly she yelled at them. Story 11 Someone in my year at school, who wanted to be a doctor, drank a bottle of antibacterial hand wash for $5. He did it because, there's nothing bad in there, his words. Needless to say, he got his stomach pumped. Story 12. 
Oh, God. We had a well-known substitute teacher who wasn't very good at maintaining discipline, which ones are, but in her case, she was particularly bad at it. In hindsight, it was obvious she was well past retirement and needed the check and was willing to put up with us for it. Usually, having her as a sub just meant lots of goofing off, but there was one particular day when she subbed my photography class and one kid from the darkroom shined a laser pointer through a darkroom window, a special window that's coded so it doesn't expose prints on the dark side and looks like a mirror on the light side. I have no idea if it's the same glass as a one-way mirror, but I'm just describing it. Straight into her eyes. I don't consider myself any sort of saintly or extra good person, but I still cringe at watching her squirming to a laser pointer shined into her eye from what was literally ten feet away. It was dehumanizing in a rich suburban kind of way. Edit. There's also no question he likely did some permanent damage to her eyes that day. I can't imagine what the substitute teacher went through that day. And it's even worse that she may have suffered permanent damage to her eyes. Story 13. There was a story here in the UK not so long ago about some kid who was messing around in class and flicking bits of food at people. He threw a bit of cheese at this kid, who it turned out had severe allergies and ended up going into anaphylactic shock. School mishandled it quite a bit, and the poor kid ended up dying. Not sure if this is exactly a case of the class clown taking it too far. He wasn't to know, but the consequences were dire even so. Story 14 He wasn't that class clown, but we were in the theater, and a kid with some mental disorder asked a guy if he liked gay or lesbian people in a presentation. I've never seen a room go so quiet. Then the next morning, the teacher had a talk with everyone about how some things were not okay to say in class. To be honest, that class was really bad. This isn't part of the question, but we had a guy punch a girl because she came out in front of the class. Freaking Gary, man. It's never okay to physically harm someone because of their sexual orientation or gender identity. It's also not okay to make insensitive comments that could hurt people's feelings. We should always treat others with respect and kindness, regardless of our differences. Story 15. Friend decided to shove his hands into my back pockets and grab my butt, and wasn't wearing a belt. Ended up pantsing me straight to the floor. I was wearing spandex-type underwear at the time. Caught those on the way down, too, and ended up pulling it down to where my anatomy sprung out of them. What was bad was worse, as our track coach had just walked in looking for me, and she got a full frontal. Not to mention, the class saw everything as well as I tried to pull my pants up, only to realize my anatomy was out on full display. Didn't even get detention. SMH. Story 16. In my English class, we all tried to be class clowns most of the time. However, the one time my friend took it too far was when at the end of the class, the teacher would go around picking up all the textbooks from each table while we stood waiting. When the teacher came round to collect his textbook, she lifted it up. My friend had unzipped his trousers and put his finger through and hidden it under the book. She screamed, and everyone else was shocked at the sight of him stood there with his wanger flopped out on the table. But before anyone could say anything... He looks down and pretends to scream in fright as well, as if he did not know what he was looking at, as he lifts his arm up and proceeds to karate chop his own penis in front of my teacher and entire class. The lad got excused for a day and got put in a new English class. It's really disappointing to see someone go so far with their jokes that they end up exposing themselves in front of the whole class. It's good to hear that they were at least given a punishment for their actions. Story 17. I went to a Christian school. We had an ethics class taught by a nun. Class clown began joking about religion, asking about anatomy of St. Peter, lewd comments about Virgin Mary, and other stuff I can't fully remember or are too young to understand. Nun got so flustered, whole face turned red, and you can definitely see how angry and at the same time embarrassed she was. She held out a rosary and asked the whole class to pray together for the class clown's soul and begged Jesus to lend us power to fight against the demon invading our class, all while the clown kept jumping around poking at the praying kids. She attempted to exercise the kid. She went to him and whispered something into the kid's ear. Tears began falling down his cheek 
and the nun accompanied him outside. I never saw him again. Officially, it was said he got transferred. Story 18. This is a true story, by the way. There was a class clown who makes pretty good jokes and is all around a respected person. They recently have been dropping roasts on people in their jokes, so people are starting to dislike them. The one thing that they said to ruin everyone's respect was making fun of the teacher. Usually, people would find it funnier because it's somebody generally doesn't like to begin with, but this was way too far. The teacher was asked if she was a Cubs fan, and she said she is because her unalive uncle, who was the nicest person she ever met, was a diehard Cubs fan. The class clown then exclaimed, He was such a diehard fan that he died hard. This was so bad that the teacher started crying and dismissed us early so she could get better. Too long didn't read? Class clown made fun of teacher's deceased uncle and made them cry. It's one thing to make jokes about people or situations, but it's another thing entirely to make fun of someone's deceased loved one. That's just cruel and disrespectful. It's understandable why the teacher was so upset and had to dismiss the class early. Hopefully, the class clown learned a valuable lesson about the importance of empathy and respecting others' feelings. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 19. I had my moments of class clownery. The only one I really regret all these years later was from middle school. My science teacher was telling us a story about dealing with bullies. Back in his day, some punks were messing with him and his friends and he confronted them. At some point in the exchange, he said something like, Come at me anytime. I'm not hard to find. I'm paraphrasing. For some reason, my dumb brain thought not hard to find, easy to spot, so large that you can see from anywhere. Looking for a laugh, I spoke up and said, Why? Were you fat? There was some muffled laughter, but all I really remember was the teacher stopping almost mid-sentence, staring daggers at me, face red as hell. He stopped his story, turned to his desk, and told us curtly to just work on homework. He barely said anything to the rest of the class. I felt like absolute dirt. It didn't register to me that, yeah, maybe he struggled with his weight as a kid, and that was part of the bullying. I really didn't imagine he was a fat kid or anything. It was just a play on the easy-to-find mental image. Damn. I apologized as best I could at the end of class, but it was tense. At the end of the year, he actually awarded me a Best Science Student Award or something like that. You know how they'll do a bunch of student awards for attendance and other stuff? I think the fact that he did that means he forgave me. But I still feel like a massive heel every time I think about that. Story 20. James took friendly jabs way too far with a girl he hardly knew. It got to the point where I would consider it borderline verbal abuse. Bless her patience. She kept it together far longer than I would, but one of those jabs struck a nerve with her. As a result, James needed stitches on his brow after getting a solid kick to the spheres followed by another one to the head with a pointy and hard heel. He was lucky it didn't gouge his eye out. This didn't happen in class. This was an office. It's important to note that verbal abuse is never acceptable, and resorting to physical violence is not the right way to handle it. In this case, the girl may have been pushed too far and reacted in a way that could have caused serious harm to James. It's always best to address issues like this through open communication and finding a resolution that works for everyone involved. Story 21. I was in third grade. My best friend and I were in the same homeroom, but our teacher was an old, strict woman. At the beginning of the year, she went student by student, asking them questions to get to know us. She asked us what our favorite cereal was and this and that, and then asked us our favorite cartoon or comic strip. She got to me, and I said, as if learning disabled, Charlie Brown penis. My friend cracked up. She paused and said, You mean peanuts with Charlie Brown and Snoopy? I replied, No. She asked, What do you mean, no? I said, Charlie Brown penis! She grabbed me by the ear, pulled me to the hallway, and whipped me with a ruler, back when teachers got away with it, just to make my best friend laugh. I guess I deserved it. Story 28. Our funny teacher thought it was worthy to mention that the class clown got the lowest grade on an assignment in the class and taught us a lesson about what happens when you goof around all day long and not pay attention. What everyone thought was funny, since the kid was usually very upbeat and happy, 
resulted in him getting so embarrassed that he ridiculed our teacher for being morbidly obese, single at 60 years old, and bald. No one understood why he would say such hurtful words as a clapback. No one laughed, but he was chuckling and brushed it off. Our teacher quietly got up as it got dead quiet, took a deep breath, flung a desk across the room, and yelled his lungs out to get the hell out of his classroom. I swear, you could hear the building shake. Once he cooled down, he apologized, but you could hear the hurt in his voice. Our class was given a worksheet and no one said a word. He was at his desk the entire rest of the class trying not to break down, and at one point exited the room to talk to the teacher next door who was concerned and heard the whole thing. They ended up changing the kid's schedule completely around mid-school year just to switch him to another teacher. No one found him funny anymore after that. It's understandable why the teacher reacted the way he did, but it's also important to remember that teachers are human too and can be hurt by words just like anyone else. It's never okay to use hurtful words as a way to retaliate against someone else's actions. Story 23 Math teacher started each semester saying the only way to get extra credit in his class was to stand on your head, wiggle your ears, and spit wooden nickels. On the last day of the most advanced math class in our high school, the class valedictorian stood on his head, wiggled his ears, and spit wooden nickels. He really did not need any extra credit. Story 24. Ha 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 ha, old. Gary, well, he always used to tease this gay kid and everyone dared him to kiss him as a dare. The sucker is still running the joke today. Even got married to. Gary knows how to do the long haul when he takes things too far. Can't wait until the big joke is revealed and everyone laughs. Classic Gary. Doesn't know when to quit. Story 25. Kid in my band class still thought your mama jokes were funny. We came back to school for the first time after Hurricane Sandy, and the kid goes to the teacher... Yo mama so, and the teacher cuts him off, perished in the hurricane. The kid never told another one of those jokes in that class. Story 28. Me in high school. My friend next to me stood up for just a quick second, and I pulled his chair out, and he landed on his butt. The class thought it was funny, but I got detention on Saturday detention. In junior high. The teacher left the room for just a quick second. Kid locked her out. No one even laughed, and he got yelled at. Story 27. Senior year. Teacher wouldn't give her a hall pass to use the bathroom, which was ridiculous. Instead of taking a more conventional stand, like walking out of the room, she sat down in her desk and peed her pants. She was suspended. I forgot for how long. There were editorials back and forth in the school paper. I was on team, teachers shouldn't try to control our bowels, but also maybe don't pee on the floor so I do appreciate your taking one for the team. While I understand the frustration of not being given a hall pass to use the bathroom, I don't think it was the best decision to just sit down and pee in your pants. It's definitely a bold move, but I'm not sure it was the most effective way to make a point. That being said, I do agree with the sentiment that teachers shouldn't have complete control over our bodily functions. Story 28. Not my class, but a kid in grade 9 was dared to snort copper nitrate. The kid passed out immediately, and with a nosebleed, ambulance was called and taken to hospital. The date was on a school's cafeteria cookie. A damn cookie. Story 29. Put tax on my brother's chair in English class. English teacher is an old, very respectable, straight-laced woman. Brother pipes down, jumps straight up, and yells, God damn it! Brother sent to detention. Story 30. When he took the razor out of a pencil sharpener and threatened to slit the black girl's throat. Teacher wasn't in the room, and we were all just staring at him like, What the actual hell, man? I never saw him again after that day. Story 31. When he ate part of the squid we were dissecting. Stomach pump for you, Chuckles. Similar story. When I was in middle school, we needed to dissect a perch. We were allowed to pick our own groups, but because I didn't have any friends in the class, I got stuck with the obnoxious kids. One of them had the genius idea of putting his mouth up to the fish's anus and sucking it like a straw. He ended up throwing up. Story 32. Pulled out a chair from underneath a kid, thinking it would be really funny when the kid fell. The kid ended up falling and cracking his head open and getting around 30 stitches. Story 33. In a high school classroom with a chill teacher, 
Someone made a joke about another kid's anatomy being small. So that kid exposed himself in front of the whole class to prove that it was large. He got suspended. Story 34. Lit a Roman candle on our bus ride home. Cop showed up and he went right out the back door and kept running. Never came back to school. Story 35. He farted loudly every single day in Mr. Jensen's social studies class. It got really old. Edit. This was 7th grade middle school. Story 36. This kid downed nine ibuprofens in like three minutes because the teacher left the room. He managed to get a headache from it. It wasn't really funny. It was just sad. Story 37. We had a younger, not great-looking substitute teacher, and everyone was cracking jokes. The sub yelled at the class, and the word disrespectful slipped out. This man had the audacity to yell out, Brush your teeth are disrespectful, and got sent to the dean and was later suspended. Story 38. We had a teacher in middle school who had a wig and a glass eye. We had three class clowns that teamed up, and at the end of the year, she left just because of their constant disruptions and bullying. I actually really liked her and always felt bad for her. Story 39. When he yelled, I lost my virginity to my dog during a quiet moment in class. Every head whipped around to stare in horror. Story 40. He loaded up corn on someone's computer while they were in the bathroom. Teacher wasn't paying attention, and the victim ended up getting suspended. Story 41. My high school class clown made a joke in a dead silent classroom about boning another teacher with another teacher in the room. His situation afterwards wasn't great. Story 42. He yelled at my English teacher from across the room, Your puns are more cancerous than girl's name. She was terminally ill with cancer and never came back to school after that day. Story 43. When he casually laid down his pee-pee on my armchair to impress my girl best friend who was my seatmate. Big, isn't it? He said with a proud smirk looking at my friend. Bruh. I would have punched it. Story 44. When our science teacher went into the lab closet, he blocked the door with a filing cabinet. Then later in the year, he got caught as he was about to put baby oil on the floor. Story 45. One time, the class clown asked what the teacher's wife, another teacher, was like in bed. It was so goddamn awkward. Better than your mother is the only acceptable answer. Story 46. Somebody in my botany class decided to blow up the AC in the room with a firecracker. It sucked because if they hadn't, I would have been done with my finals a week earlier. Story 47. When he opened a can of tuna and put it in the teacher's bag, the teacher was such a nice lady and only ever tried to help him. Disgusting behavior. Story 48. When he made a big joke about unaliving everyone around him, but then the Glock 18 falls out of his bag. Oh, what a comedian. Story 49. My class clown got dared to propose to our math teacher with a choco stick in the ninth grade. He got suspended. Story 50. Ate a whole ton of notebook paper and ended up going home after he projectile vomited on the goddamn floor. Story 51. Asked a girl how she was Latina and black. I don't know what he was thinking. Story 52. He tried to pants the teacher. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.